Um, in terms of formal citations, formal citations are always composed of two different chunks of information. One information piece is the in-text citation. And that's usually the name, date, and um, that's about it for both the APA and MLA styles. So again, in-text citations. Years and years ago, when people used to use footnotes, that would be equivalent to an in-text citation. So whether you use an in-text citation or a footnote or some other form of citation, you must put something in the body of the work that references the information. That information references very specifically the bibliography. So this in-text citation should then show up in the bibliography. And the bibliography, of course, goes at the end of the work. So how do you do this in your brains piece? Once again, remember, you must have the inline citation as well as a bibliographic reference in order to have a complete citation. So if I'm looking at the APA style, and I am down here in my, um, I'm down here in my notes area where I'm going to write this. Note that we do not want you to put citations in line or bibliographic on the slide itself, only in the written portion. I have a starter sentence here. Obviously, this is just purely a sample. Patterns of learning called primacy recency effect are strong indicators of. Well, as soon as I mention the phrase primacy recency effect, I must give credit to the author from whom I'm drawing that information. In this particular case, I'm going to give credit to David Sousa, even though within his book he also credits earlier works as well. For the purposes of our learning here, I'm going to just go ahead and, and give him the credit on this one. Um, in order to create this reference, the things that we need to know are, uh, I'm going to jump over here to brace, uh, the course resources, we need to know the name of the uh, author, we need to know the title of the work, the year it was published, the edition, where it was published, and uh, the publishing company name. We also need to know that it's a book. Now this information, the way it's listed here is neither MLA or APA, but simply just the raw information. What you must do is you must actually um, create the correct citation with this information. A great way to do that is to jump to uh, Son of Citation Machine. Uh, let me jump back out and show you where you would find that kind of thing. If you go to Tech Part 1, uh, this is the link for Son of Citation Machine.net right there, and that would bring you to this resource here. I'm going to just back up for your sake of being able to flip back and forth. So, once again, here's my core raw data information. Here's my citation machine, and here is my PowerPoint. Now, in my PowerPoint, I have the body of my work here, and then I have a bibliography at the end. Of course, in my presentation, I wouldn't have this dash APA on either slide. It's there strictly for information related to what, what I'm trying to teach you guys here. Okay, So if I jump back here, and I'm going to be uh, going back and forth. The first sample I'm going to show you is the APA style. Going to jump into APA. Now I know for a fact that this is a book. If it were something else, of course, I'd, I'd obviously choose something else, but because it's a book, I know how to do that and put that in there. It prompts me in this form what to do. The last uh, name is uh, Sousa. The first initial is David, and um, it says followed by a period. So if you read it, enter the last name, initials of the first and middle names, followed by a period, the year published. The sample that I am going to use is the year 2008, oops, sorry, 2005. And the title of the work, I'm going to actually, um, how the brain learns. Okay, it says capitalize It says to capitalize only the first word. The publishing city is Thousand Oaks, California, and the publishing company is Corwin Press, Inc. Okay, so now I've basically typed in all of the information that is necessary or has been available to me. Notice that the APA style does not reference or require 
uh, edition I information. The this ABA style, the MLA style, they have each of them nuances that dictate do you put in um, caps here, caps there, italicized here, etc. Some require edition numbers, some don't, that kind of thing. So that's why a uh, source like Son of Citation Machine is so easy. It does the work for you. So once I have this information, I'm going to go ahead and click on Submit. And here we have exactly what we need. Notice here it gives me the in-text citation. I don't have to even think about it. I just highlight Copy. And I'm going to jump over to, excuse me, my PowerPoint. And I'm going to go to my inline citation area here. I'm going to put that information in right behind his name. So notice that I've got the name of the author and the year published. Now I must go over to the bibliography and add the bibliographic information. To do that, I'm going to jump right back to Son of Citation because it's already done for me right here. I'm going to highlight and copy that. And I'm going to jump to my PowerPoint. And in my PowerPoint, I don't want a bullet there, so I can just paste that information right there, and I'm done. So once again, to create a correct citation, you need to have two elements. One is the in-text citation, and the other must be the bibliographic reference that goes back to that in-text citation. They work together. So here's a sample of an in-text citation here, right here, and here's <clears throat> the corresponding um, um, bibliography, and I apologize, I misspelled that, so obviously I can change that right there. So that's how I would do that as an APA style. Let me jump in and uh, do this as an MLA style really quickly, just so you can do a real quick compare, contrast kind of deal. So I'm going to jump back over to Son of Citation, I'm going to go to the MLA style, and I'm going to go to the book, and once again, I'm going to complete the information, Sousa, and um, here it says last name, then first name. So I'm going to spell out his first name because I know that. Here, the directions, the title of the work include the entire title, um, including subtitles, capitalize important words. So how the brain learns a classroom teacher's guide, okay? So... Um, the information is there. The edition of the book is second. The volume number doesn't apply. The publishing city is uh, Thousand Oaks, California. The publishing company is Corwin Press, Inc. And the year published is 2005. And here I can actually give page numbers. So if I wanted to talk about um, the... Um, primacy recency here, I am going to just simply pick uh, page 88 through 90. I'm not quite sure that that's correct, but this is just a sample. The medium here is a print. It's a printed book. I'm going to go ahead and click on submit. Now, here's a big difference. If I take a look here, the in-text citation doesn't have the year, but it rather has the, the page numbers. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to jump over to my um, PowerPoint. And so once again, patterns of learning called primacy recency effect are strong indicators of etc, etc, etc. I need to put an inline citation here, and then that inline citation must line up and match my bibliographic citation done over here. And once again, I don't have to think about it. All I need to do is copy and paste. Oops, sorry. I'm going to go ahead, get rid of my bullet here. And there it is. Okay, so that's a real quick way, real quick way of looking at how to put together a very straightforward citation for a uh, book. And if you are citing um, other things, such as, let me jump back here, such as uh, a journal article, you can again choose whether it's going to be MLA or APA, just be consistent, and you're going to click into the journal article and you're going to put the information as you know it and put it in there and you'll get your inline and um, uh, bibliographic citation same as if you were to do uh, the APA style similar information here you know if you were to jump out to a newspaper article uh, government publication if it were a non-print piece for example if it were a web page you would uh, use this particular uh, tool if you were looking at a um, 
sometimes we often look at um, conference proceedings, for example, lecture work or um, different kinds of things like that. So a conference proceeding might be something that is a formal conference, but certainly for your lectures in class, you can use the um, online um, piece here, and then that way you don't have to worry about um, finding specific more information. Some of these are going to be a little bit tougher to to identify, but these are the basic guidelines that you would want to follow. If you want a web-based media, um, you're going to uh, put this information in. Oftentimes when you're looking at an image, you won't know what the name of the image is because the author didn't put that. So you're just going to simply describe the image. For example, if you have an image of a cat, you would say a cat. Um, and you would give the web uh, web address down here. This would be because, again, you may not always know the um, information in terms of the year produced. You would put in the year that you captured the information. Um, up here in terms of last name and initial, once again, if you don't know that information, you're not going to put that in there. So once again, very quick uh, rundown of MLA versus APA, how to create um, using Son of Citation Machine, a solid reference. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.